I'm going to take you through the story of Merch and Cooling going mainstream right now. And this is a truly exciting show for us because who would have expected five years ago we would see four different immersion cooling suppliers, solution providers, at a show like this. Exactly, that's quite amazing. And there's a reason for it. Even Ashray is now announcing earlier this year a pre-announcement of an update of the liquid cooling white paper with more urgency than they were expecting themselves, driven by technology changes, increasing need for liquid cooling, and other environmental and technical aspects taking into consideration for liquid cooling. There's a real urgency right now. This liquid white paper is in preparation. We're contributing to it, and it's showing the urgency to prepare now. It's not just ASHRAE, it's open compute as well. We take an active role in the community, driven by hyperscalers, telecom providers, uh, OEMs, um, all well-known names, developing the very first standards for liquid cooling and immersion cooling specifically. An advanced cooling work group, or sub-project as they call it, has started last year. We have taken the lead as Asperitas to develop the basic requirements and the standards for immersion cooling specifically. That's a separate work stream, I would say, um, to work towards the first, very first solution, OCP-ready um, immersion cooling solution, right? Um, so the standards are being developed right now. There's a real urgency to look into this technology, which definitely hasn't been new. But we have something to celebrate. It has been now 120 years ago that the very first patent for immersion cooling, high voltage transformers, has been awarded to Richard Fleming from General Electric. That's quite, quite a long way back. A few decades later, 1968, IBM awarded, uh, got awarded his first patent on low voltage systems, immersion cooling technology. And this opened the door for the development of technologies regarding high performance computing and immersion cooling. And it stayed there for quite a bit. Immersion cooling, optimizing systems, tweaking every bits and piece to reach the very first, um, very uh, elementary aspect of performance, specifically. And it stayed there until the 80s, until CPUs became much more efficient. Um, and it came back later on. From 2006, several immersion cooling providers focused on high-performance computing, actually, um, to provide with, uh, with immersion cooling. Um, and it stayed there for quite a bit. Until in 2017, we came on the market with our natural convection-driven technology, offering a full redundant solution, fully integrated, contained, um, suitable for enterprise applications of the highest level. So, meeting every high requirement a data center could have today. Is this single phase or two phase? Single phase, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, it's a single phase solution, correct. Offering several benefits, addressing all of the challenges we see actually today. And the panel previous to this talk actually addressed some regarding sustainability, for example, um, new designs for data centers, um, interesting opinions they had on it. But immersion cooling is enabling an energy footprint reduction with 50% just by implementing a solution like ours. It can make sure that you can run the same IT performance on only one-fifth of the floor space. And with the same technology, we can run CPUs on a much higher performance. We have been executing actually experiments, pilots with AMD, and the results were really staggering. So we can offer 40%, in some cases even 50% higher utilization of CPUs when they're immersion cooled in our technology. For some applications, this is making a real difference. But the real advantage is that we know with immersion cooling will be ready for the next generations of hardware. And the beauty, I think, is really beyond the technology itself. It's about the impact it can have outside of the facility. And that's regarding energy reuse. And again, a lot of talks 
during this conference has been about sustainability. Immersion cooling makes it really simple to make the big leap in terms of energy reuse, right? We can turn 99% of the electrical consumption of our systems and turn it into a valuable resource of heat, hot water of 55 degrees Celsius. That's changing the model as we see data centers and the sustainability aspects, right? And we can all do that without having to impact the business case for data centers as we know it. Actually, we improve it, both the capital expenditure and the OPEX, with 30 up to 45%. We make it mainstream by integrating a few key aspects and unique elements in immersion cooling. So, as I said, we have launched the first solution which is entirely nat natural convection driven. That means that there is no forced circulation of the fluid inside of the systems. This is unique. And it's offering a system which is extremely reliable, no moving parts, no pumps. So also no pumps and moving parts you need to service or maintain or replace in some cases. No overhead energy. So a truly reliable solution for all kinds of applications. From standalone systems, plug and play, to hyperscale, offering hyperscale efficiency on any scale. What we do is integrate monitoring and control systems, sensor based, within the technology to make sure we can monitor the health of the IT even on a distance and in real time. The true investment our customers are making is on the IT side, up to 1 million euros per immersion system worth of hardware goes inside, right? So this is exactly the type of investment we're trying to protect. The technology is climate independent by itself. It's warm water cooled, up to 45, in some cases 50, 50 degrees Celsius. It has a use advantage. Also the other advantage, as I mentioned, is energy reuse on scale. We optimize our technology specifically for that purpose, making sure we can deliver warm water out of the facility anywhere it can be used. So the impact on the way we design data centers, and the, the previous panel, uh, one of the quotes I still, um, uh, still heard when I came in, mentioned that there's not much anymore we can do about the design of data centers. It's that simple now. And it is that simple, but it is as well that simple to change the model of data centers and still improve it. Right? Immersion cooling can do that. Yeah, it can impact the business case of a data center design immediately, up to six kilowatts per rack, and keeping in account that data centers and rack densities are doubling in the next four or five years, this business case is becoming relevant and worthwhile for all kinds of enterprises now. What we do is build a data center which has the IT performance of, a, let's say, a one megawatt data center today. We do the same, but only in one fifth of the floor space in a much more simplified data center design. So we can still change the design of a data center if we change the model. Uh, one of the other panelists were saying, it's just a box in a box in a box. But if we change the box, the whole model is different. And that's what immersion cooling and immersed computing, in our case, the solution we provide, can do in a very simplified manner. So let's go back a little bit at the challenges we see and we hear about as well on conference like today. And one of them is driven by all the emerging technologies we like to hear about, talk about, like AI, blockchain, uh, fintech. Um, it's all high density compute. And that's pushing power density on each level within a data center, starting with the CPUs, the GPUs, or other types of semiconductor we're seeing nowadays, pushing the power density up to 400 FPGAs, even 600 watts per card. That's a challenge on its own. Pushing the power density of a server, more IT in the same form factor. The same for a rack. As I said, rack densities are expected to double in the next four or five years. That's something to take really into account. And the same for the facility. More IT power in less space, anywhere where it's needed. Those are tremendous challenges we have to deal with. 
and therefore we have to change the model. Luckily, it's very simplified by the introduction of immersion cooling, right? And this is the way we work beyond the technology we offer. We work with some leading providers of components we integrate in our immersion computing system, starting with the fluid. Um, so we have announced a partnership with Shell Lubricants, one of the leading providers globally of fluids, um, one, actually one of the companies developing fluids, for example, for EVs and originally for transformers. We work with them on optimizing fluids for immersion cooling. And together, we'll bring an end product to the market optimized for immersion cooling for the entire market. As I said, we work for AMD and we work with Intel to provide them with the knowledge we develop during our R&D projects, experiments, pilots, and assigned projects specifically. So as I said, that's how we found out that we can push the performance of AMD Epics with 40, 50 percent. Yeah. If it comes to optics, there's a whole different ballgame. So we have been working with Leoni, a leading cable manufacturer, and Tenjitech, both specialized in optic components, to make sure we solve the issue of using optics into immersion. And we did. Yeah. Another challenge goes to data center facility design, right? The previous panel, again, loads of ideas and opinions on it. Fact is, it seems to be that the only solution nowadays for data centers is build them just larger, or in the Nordics. But that's not the solution for all. That can't work that way anymore. Edge computing is real. It will demand the industry to look at technologies and designs where we can optimize and standardize efficiency on any scale and anywhere not just hyperscale in Sweden. And this is a true challenge. Cooling costs in hot climates are still a real topic to work on. We're quite lucky here in the Netherlands, where we are from, or the Nordics, or UK. It's, it's free calling, a free cooling country. That's not everywhere. So this is how we work with some of the co-location providers. And, um, Cool DC in Lincoln is actually a great example of a pioneer in truly adopting liquid cooling in an optimized data center design. They provide a data center now in Lincoln, it's integrated as part of the tech campus, optimized and fully focused on liquid cooling, resulting in a data center which is one of the most sustainable actually at the moment and being awarded for it as well. Looking back at what I mentioned before in terms of floor space, this is actually a really great example. It's, it's a data center which has not been originally designed as a data center, and still they're able, with liquid cooling and immersion, to provide the high density facility um, locally, right? We work with Bysnet, that's a Dutch co-location provider which is focused on bringing healthcare as a service in terms of HPC to healthcare organizations anywhere, on-premise, off-premise, containerized, in co-location, and they can do that because they standardize on immersion cooling. We work with Stefia, a global data center uh, services provider, but located in France, where we have deployed together a project for Credit Agricole, one of the global leading banks, a tier, three data, a tier four data center they're actually running. Um, and about now, we're running about a year time, a project on our technology for them. And this has led to some really interesting results. They will publish the case themselves in a few days, but it resulted to a data center setup based on immersed computing, where they can run all year round on a PoE of 1.04. And we're not that fond of a PoE, but they're really excited about it. And I can imagine why. It's cutting cooling costs, simplicity, and high quality engineering enables that banks can now stamp into a technology which has proven itself as already as the most efficient immersion cooling. This is the time that banks step in. That's the true enterprise. And we use all this expertise from projects like these and partnerships like these to work on edge computing facilities driven by 5G. Because that's where it's mostly needed. 
decentralized facilities where all the power available goes to the IT and not to cooling necessarily. And that's what immersion cooling can do, right? This is one of my favorite personal topics, sustainability. Some of you in the room are certainly aware that I've been working on that for quite a while right now. And we all have as an industry, I have to say, I think altogether more than a decade, we have been optimizing data center design, uh, PoE, etc. But now the game has changed. It's not about improving the PoE anymore. It's about energy reuse on scale, beyond experimentation. And it's about cutting cooling costs in hot climates. And this is urgent. In Amsterdam, it's really difficult now to build a new data center. They put a hold on it for three reasons. Data centers use too much floor space. It's difficult to get the power to the data center. And they would like to match energy demand, heat, with the capacity data centers can deliver. So they took a pause to settle this and figure it out how this is going to work. Immersion can check all the boxes. It can be done today. We work with different utility providers on projects and uh, making sure that this can be delivered on scale based on our technology, right? And we do that as well through a newly set up association, the Sustainable Digital Infrastructure Alliance, which are here today as well, to combine a set of specialized solution providers in different areas to make sure energy reuse will step up its game. This is a very exciting project I'm really anxious to tell you about. Um, and we have waited quite a while actually to bring this out on the public. Um, this is an energy plant uh, provi provided by Ineco, one of the utility providers in the Netherlands, where we integrate the internet energy plant with a data center. We work together with several, um, well, expert leaders, I would say, in terms of data, data center architecture and fe feasibility studies to make sure that this is a project that can be executed. There's an energy plant centrally located next to the city of Utrecht, where there's plenty of space for brownfield data center development and greenfield data center development, up to 20,000 20, square meters, and plenty of power available, at least 20 megawatts from the first phase and onwards. And the beauty is, it's naturally integrated in an environment which is offering all the requirements the highest requirement data centers are actually asking for. Redundancy, power, cooling, it's all there. Security, as you can see, it's built like an island. And, that, and the beauty beyond the facility is that it's directly connected to provide up to 50,000 households with heat. So there's no matching issue anymore. Our technology with a strategic location can be a groundbreaking data center development opportunity. So, changing the model is possible if we work together, right? So, there are loads of USPs of this area, but the full potential can only be used by integrating immersion cooling technology with the location. So, we work really closely together to do so. And the beauty of this whole setup is that the utility will harvest the heat. They will take care of that. That's another way of thinking. So, the data center is not delivering it, they're harvesting it. So this is the way we work beyond our technology. The technology is ready for enterprise level, for mainstream, for banks, uh, for oil and gas, for the high requirement companies. To really step up, we work together with every player and manufacturer which is important to deliver on scale in the highest quality possible. So we do that from semiconductor, OEM standardization, system built, up to data center design and delivery, and utility. We take the full ecosystem. Yeah. And this is the time to prepare. The technology is there, the partnerships are there. ASHRAE is urging you to look into immersion cooling now, seriously. And you might have done that already a few years back. We have met quite some people, and actually I can see them sitting here, who did so a few years back, told us that today and they're reconsidering by seeing the technology which is available today. And this is really important. Um, OCP is doing so, preparing it for hyperscale, and that will be really groundbreaking. So the technology is breaking performance levels, is offering the efficiency and the sustainability, all of the challenges, 
which are required now, to be future ready. Yeah? So you have the opportunity during the Shell to learn more from our partners. Shell will be there tomorrow. They can tell you all about the fluid development we are executing with them. Boston is there, specialized in system design, high density compute, as well for AI, elite partner of NVIDIA and AMD. We happily work together on integration for immersion. CoolDC is here, so you can learn all about their adoption of liquid cooling in general, immersed computing as well, optimized design and their ambitions. And the guys from the Sustainable Digital Infrastructure Alliance are there as well to talk about how the ecosystem for energy reuse will be executed. Now, because we still have time, <laughs> I would like to take the time for a really special announcement. Um, and it is really relevant. We also noticed that today during conversations on the booth, immersion cooling has been there for a while, and misconceptions have been there for a while. And it's really important at this moment that we settle information really straight, so we make sure that reliable information regarding this really impactful technology is available for a wider audience. And that's exactly the reason we work together with, well, an interesting partner, Green Revolution Cooling, one of our competitors, one of the leaders in immersion cooling for a decade or so, to provide a platform which we call immersionfaq.com, where we collect all the frequent asked questions we came across together in the past years and come with fact-based, reliable and vendor agnostic information to address most topics that we come across regarding immersion cooling. So, it addresses all kinds of questions regarding hardware integration, fluids, um, immersion cooling as a category and the different types, single phase, two phase, and this can be your platform to go to if you're exploring and preparing now for immersion cooling. And if the information is not there which you would like to see, then approach us. We'll expand this continuously. But we think this is really a step up and a unique moment that two competitors in the same product category are collaborating to provide the information we all need to make sure that this will reach the scale we believe the technology deserves. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'm still available. If we have time. Oh, there you go. Um, the CPU produces the heat. Yeah. It's transferred through convective cooling into the cooling liquid itself. Right. How is that excess heat stripped off the cooling, immersion cooling fluid in order to allow it to not overheat? By water-cooled integrated heat exchangers. Um, so we bring out hot water, basically, from our systems and the, and the uh, facility, eventually. But yeah. where does it end up? You say there's yeah. no pumps. There's no pumps, yeah. So For the circulation of the fluid inside, right? So you've yeah. got cold water coming in to interact yeah. with the fluid and, and strip the heat. In, indirectly, right? So with integrated heat exchanges. But yeah, exactly. They're separated compartments. But I would like to invite you to the live system we have on show here, actually. Um, there we can explain in detail how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Christian Bellotti, Microsoft. We're firm believers in immersion cooling, so Great. good yeah. work, good work. <laughs> um, we've done extensive testing, but you seem to auger into uh, single phase right. and oil based. Yeah. Um, w what was the reasoning? I mean, we find oil is messy to deal with, mm -hmm. um, and so why single phase and not two-phase, which tends to be cleaner. Right. So I think that has to do as well with the solution we provide, right? So we prefer, provide the cleanliness, so every bit of, uh, of equipment you need to surface, both mechanical and electrical, can be accessed dry. So the messy yeah, is not there, the oil is never leaving the system. Um, but it has been as well a strategic choice. Uh, synthetic oil is, is pure, it's clean, it's affordable and available anywhere. And there's some true, um, reliable and um, reputable players out there which put a lot of R&D effort in it. And it, it has been used for immersing electronics already, of course, for a long time. So yeah. in your demo downstairs, do you show how, you could clean, how it comes out clean? Um, well, we, we, bring a, we brought a board indeed which has been immersed, yeah. Oh, we definitely can show it. Yeah. You don't have the system here. We have the system here, but okay, yeah, I'll not yeah, okay. definitely. All right, great. Yeah. All right. 
Thank you again.